Hello, welcome, Cabbage here. In Near Reincarnation, let's talk about some of the game modes and then uh, have a kind of a first look at battle. And uh, this here is the base mode. It's uh, walking around the cage, uh, this giant structure. And this is so different from other mobile games. And I can see a lot of casual gamers picking up this game uh, because of the cage. And if the only thing this reminds you of is Genshin, good god, study some game history, please. <laughs> It reminds me of like Another World and Flashback, uh, Prince of Persia, Eco, and, and all the games that those inspired, uh, including some uh, more recent Zelda games, uh, including uh, many indie games like Sword and Sorcery, Monument Valley, stuff like that. And then a kind of similar-ish music across all of those titles as well. And it's a fascinating place in the world of video games to draw from because most weekly updated gacha games are fast-paced and action-oriented and colorful and loud, uh, but eco and similar games are slow, quiet, contemplative, almost meditative. I wonder if it is a risk to put this element in a mobile game. I mean, it's taken in another entire company to make the cage, uh, so to put this element uh, in the game can't be cheap. And then if they design it so that you can't advance without a pay-to-play account, that's going to turn off a lot of people, uh, especially the, uh, the casual folks that started for this reason in the first place. Uh, there is a, a PvP element, which I'll show later, and that can operate on its own power creep schedule. Uh, but hopefully the PvE side, uh, the cage here, will remain on the easier side. But think about it. Enjoying the cage and all the stories within it for free is amazing to think about. Lots of mobile games have stories, and some of them are even good, but none of them have put the effort into the presentation, uh, like this one here. And some people dismiss presentation in favor for the content, uh, but it can matter just as much, if not more, and I think we can see the difference here. I see it as a risky move to release a game like this into the gacha game market, uh, but if there's anybody that can forge a new path in video games, it's the uh, Nier team. Uh, it'll be fascinating to see how this game performs, and how it influences current and future games. Uh, but we can uh, go to battle, and uh, one thing that I'll show you that might be uh, controversial is that, you know, I can walk around the cage here, but I can also hit this auto button, and it will run for me through the cage. <laughs> and so, like, you know, again, the casual players, they can kind of treat this as, like, a movie. They don't need to, uh, you know, move the character through the cage. Uh, but sometimes we will see these fences. I can tap on that and then my uh, party will come up. Uh, I think it's all fine with the uh, setup, so we can uh, go into here. And then uh, this is perfect to look at because it's a wave battle. Um, so it will take some time and uh, we can uh, look at what's going on. <laughs> All right, our team has three members, and their regular attacks will come out automatically, uh, as does the enemy attacks. And then the character face icon has a gauge around it, and when it fills, you can hit it. And then when you hit it, you will do a special move. And then uh, the weapons you equip also have some skills. Those are those smaller squares. We can hit a few of those. And so, like, different weapons come with different skills, so there might not be a single best-in-slot uh, weapon for a unit. It may depend on the weapon skills, or the element, or the situation. And those also charge the same way as character skills. And then when you do hit it, it doesn't come out immediately. Uh, it goes into a queue that we can't see. And then uh, two skills can't happen at once, generally. Um, so you attack and do damage, but if you get combos, or like many hits in a row, uh, you will get bonus damage. And then you can do certain skills in a certain order to get better combos, but I haven't looked into that uh, very hard yet. Uh, there's no limit to these skills uh, per battle. Uh, you just wait until it uh, charges. And then uh, there are two options up here, uh, speed up and then auto. I'll turn those both on now. Uh, auto keeps doing normal attacks and adds weapon skills when they charge. And I believe auto does not use uh, character skills. Let's use that now. Uh, but you can hit them anyway and then not disable uh, auto battle. 
and then I haven't played very far, but so far there's really no need to turn off auto, and uh, manual play doesn't feel very engaging either. Maybe deeper in the game, or maybe some months in the future, gameplay will get deeper. Uh, but if it just comes down to how strong your units and equipment are, then I'm kind of meh about that. Uh, I've played other mobile games where everything is great. The story, graphics, music, bug fixes, developer communication, uh, rewards and all that. All of it's great, except for the battle gameplay, and then I'll quit, just because it's that important to me. Uh, like Final Fantasy X-2 is one of the most embarrassingly bad Final Fantasies out there, but in my opinion, uh, it has the best job system of any Final Fantasy, so I go back and I play it every now and then. <laughs> All right, let's hit auto. Let's uh, keep running. And I've spoken about this in my Why is Auto Battle video, but different people and even different cultures have different views about what it means to play a game, quote unquote play. A lot of players have a very narrow view and feel like only battle is truly playing the game, uh, but many, many Japanese people consider going through menus and team building and leveling units or equipment as playing the game. And for some people even, it's what they enjoy most. Like on recent polls I've seen about mobile games where they ask what parts of the game they enjoy most, uh, ikusei, or leveling, uh, is an option to choose. And a lot of people use the term waifu collector, but to many Japanese video game players, uh, simply having the unit does not fulfill players. Uh, they must max it and use it a thousand times, and max all their equipment and add-ons and skills, and that is why there are so many aspects to leveling. It's for the Japanese audience, and that's what they like. And uh, my Japanese mother taught me that Japanese people love to suffer, and if you can understand that one point, you will understand so much of their culture and history, and how they like to play video games. <laughs> They love the tedious grind. It's like the more ridiculous it is, the more they feel that it is worth doing. Uh, but anyway, the goals of wandering the cage are finding these uh, black scarecrows, like uh, this one here, uh, that teleport you into a picture book like Weapon Story. Uh, you can play slash watch the story, beat the enemy, and if you beat all the parts of the story, uh, you will get the weapon whose memory you just witnessed. Um, I've decided not to show or translate any of these stories because it's one of the biggest reasons to play the game. Uh, none of the stories so far are super amazing or original, but again, the presentation is beautiful, uh, so I'm enjoying them, and I like the characters in there as well. Uh, so, the cage and then the weapon stories, they inhabit that space, that story or maid mode uh, quests inhabit in other games. Uh, but besides the cage, there are also event quests, or like sub-quests, or collaboration quests. And those are more like just kind of wave battles without any uh, like area. It's like you're entering like uh, the X-Men uh, Danger Room. Uh, but in the case of uh, collaboration quests, like with the uh, current Nier Automata, uh, there's a little bit of uh, additional story there. But yeah, that'll do it for this video. I guess at this point I can ask you, the viewer, how you feel about uh, this and that. Have you played games like Ico and uh, did you enjoy them? Do you think that kind of play style will work in a mobile game? And then have you played mobile games where like the battle slash action is only meh and then did you stick with the game? And then related to that, what does play mean to you in a video game? Like do you enjoy menus and team building and leveling and all that? Alright, thanks for watching. We'll see you again. Take care.